Number 8. The Armored Truck Heist A $2.9 million casino heist went unsolved for 12 long years before the thief decided to turn themselves in. The Las Vegas heist was chosen to go under the spotlight for Netflix's critically acclaimed docuseries, Heist, in 2021. When Heather Talchi first met Roberto Solis, she was a 21-year-old girl from Buffalo, New York. Solis was 48 at the time and worked as a bartender in San Francisco. Talchi was a nursing assistant and worked at the hospital with terminal cancer and AIDS patients who had a huge emotional impact on her. She was later fired from the job for using drugs as an unhealthy coping mechanism. During this difficult moment in her life, she met Solis, who showed her love and introduced her to a new world of sex, magic, mysticism, and crime. He wasn't actively committing crimes when they started dating, but he had served time before for robbery and murder. The couple soon moved to Las Vegas and Tall Chief went to work for Loomis, the same armored car firm Solis tried to rob in 1969. She claimed she didn't put the two together at the time. She drove to casinos all over the Strip and waited while her co-workers refilled ATMs they serviced with cash. Solis convinced her to keep a record of everything she did for her job. She'd inform Solis of the routes they'd follow as well as other important details. Finally, on October 1st, 1993, less than two months after starting her job, Heather Tailchief drove away in the armored vehicle with $3 million while her co-workers were in the Vegas Circus Circus Hotel stocking up ATMs. She drove to a storage location where Solis was waiting and the two loaded money into their getaway car, sent it to Miami in boxes, and drove it to the airport in disguises. They zigzagged across the country to dodge authorities, stopping in Miami for a short period before flying to St. Martin, all while avoiding the FBI. The police investigation came to a halt in Miami with no additional clues. Authorities were concerned for the 21-year-old's safety alongside a convicted murderer. After obtaining fake documents, the pair traveled to Amsterdam from St. Martin, where Tall Chief got pregnant. She says in Netflix's docuseries that she left Solis shortly after giving birth, wanting her son to have a normal childhood. When her son was 10 years old, Tall Chief had enough of living with lives. She hoped one day he would be able to travel to the United States, get citizenship, and live a regular life. So she wrote to a U.S. lawyer, traveled to California, and flew to Vegas in September 2005 to turn herself in. Tall Chief pleaded guilty to her crime. Her defense argued that she was indoctrinated, misled, and forced to commit the act by her older boyfriend at the time. She was convicted and sentenced to five years in prison and ordered to repay the $2.9 million. Tall Chief was released in 2010, and she currently resides in the United States, works in the healthcare industry again, and is very close with her son Dylan, who recently graduated from college. But where is Solis now? Still on the loose? Tall Chief hasn't heard or seen Solis since she left him in Amsterdam, and she believes he's dead. He would be 77 years old if he was still alive, and he would have eluded the FBI for 29 years. That makes his theft with Tall Chief in 1993 a near perfect crime. Number 7. The Luxury Heist If you've ever dreamt about having piles of products from Gucci, Prada, or Chanel, then David La Carriere lived your dream. On January 31st, 2020, La Carriere went to an importer's receiving office and presented forged paperwork for a Prada shipment. According to authorities, he and Gary MacArthur, another man with inside information, reportedly sought the help of two others and put four pallets of Prada items onto a trailer and drove away. They made off with about $804,000 in Prada bags, clothes, and accessories. The 34-year-old was one of two former Kennedy Airport truckers accused of coordinating this crime using his inside knowledge. Gucci purses, sunglasses, sneakers, and clothes, as well as Prada bags and more were among the stolen items. The truck involved in the heist was discovered a few days later, but it was empty, and the interior had been bleached and cleaned of any evidence. In a separate JFK theft in May of the same year, the team repeated the similar routine and got off with five pallets holding thousands of Chanel and Gucci products worth more than $4.4 million this time. In June 2020, investigators traced down the crew members to a closed beauty salon in Jamaica that they claim was used as a storage facility for stolen goods. They discovered over 3,000 Gucci pieces and over 1,000 Chanel items worth an estimated $2.5 million or more during the search. 
LeCarriere was accused of holding more than $2.5 million in stolen designer goods when he was arrested last October and charged with a Class B felony. He'll be in prison for nearly a decade. One of his accomplices was also arrested in March of 2021, sentenced up to six years in prison. Meanwhile, the hunt for the other two alleged helpers is ongoing. Number 6, Antwerp Diamond Heist The heist of the century takes us to Antwerp, Belgium, the diamond trade's global hub. Most of this trade occurs in Antwerp's Diamond District, which is made up of three blocks full of jewelers, vaults, stores, and trading forums. Because of this precious cargo, you better believe these jewels are well protected. So how were five guys able to pull off fleeing with $100 million in stolen gems without getting noticed? Leonardo Notobartolo was the mastermind. For three years, he worked as a semi-legitimate merchant at the World Diamond Center. During this time, he made lots of friends and became very familiar with the building as well. His ID badge granted him access to the building and the vault underneath it 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Although photography is officially prohibited within the vault, Notar Bartolo is clever. He attached a miniature camera to the top of a pen and carried it in his shirt pocket, allowing him to take hundreds of images inside. With these, Notar Bartolo and his team built an exact replica of the vault in a warehouse. They practiced the crime in their duplicate vault over and over until they had the perfect plan. Notar Bartolo's five-man team arrived at the World Diamond Center early on a Saturday morning and broke into the office building next door. They then scaled the center side to reach a balcony where they broke a window to get in. From there, they simply strolled down to the vault in the basement. No security guards were posted that night, and when they arrived at the vault, they covered the camera with a black bag and turned on the lights. The combination to the first lock was captured by Noto Bartolo's pen on camera, while the super secret key to the super safe vault was not so discreetly hidden in a closet on the next wall as Notar Bartolo knew from his frequent visits. Once inside, they headed straight for the safe deposit boxes and packed everything they could into big suitcases. The value of the jewels is estimated to be in the range of $100 million. They sprinted out a back door where Notar Bartolo was waiting to drive them away. There were no remnants left behind, or so they thought. One of the thieves in a frenzy following their heist threw a trash bag out the window to make room in the car for the loot. Inside the bag? A half-eaten ham sandwich, anonymous pay stubs from the Diamond Center, and gloves they used during the crime. The cops followed this trail of clues to Noto Bartolo's residence, where they discovered the stolen diamonds. Noto Bartolo refused to name any of his collaborators after being apprehended. For the heist, he was tried and convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison. The cops tracked down three of his partners, each of whom received a five-year prison sentence on account of the heist. Do you think you could pull off a heist? Let us know in the comments below, and if you liked the video so far, be sure to subscribe for more. Number 5. The Swedish Art Heist Art makes up some of the world's most valuable possessions. With this thought in mind, a band of burglars stormed into Stockholm's National Museum on December 22, 2000. Three men, one of them armed with a submachine gun, entered the lobby at the same time. The museum was still open. While the other two rushed upstairs, the one with the gun told employees and visitors to get down. Three paintings were taken, a Rembrandt self-portrait and two Renoirs. If you're unfamiliar with these artists, they are very famous and expensive works. The police were on their way, but the crooks weren't leaving by car. Instead, they boarded a motorboat and left the scene. To help their escape, they threw nails in front of the museum in hopes of tearing up the police tires that would eventually chase them. This robbery was far from perfect, despite it sounding like a Hollywood heist film. Sure, these works of art are highly valuable, but they are also easily recognizable, making it practically impossible to sell them safely on the black market. The police got ransom notes demanding several million krona, as well as images of the stolen paintings in less than a month. But the museum refused to pay, and by 2001, several of the perpetrators had been arrested. During a separate drug raid that same year, one of the Renoirs was found. An arrest of a Bulgarian crime lord in Los Angeles in 2005 resulted in the recovery of yet another Rembrandt, as well as information on the last one's hiding place. After posing as a buyer, an FBI agent was able to reclaim the painting because they couldn't find a buyer for the $42 million painting, the sellers were attempting to get rid of it for $100,000. Talk about a bargain. Number four, the airport heist. Here's another one featured in Netflix's show Heist. This one started in April 2005 when Onelio Diaz, a Brink security guard, 
informed his friend, the truck driver Carl Mazon, about major security concerns surrounding a daily cash shipment at the Miami International Airport. Millions of euros being transferred from a German bank to the U.S. Federal Reserve's Miami office were left in a loading dock with little security for nearly two hours while money was counted. Mazon enlisted the support of relatives and friends after spending months scoping out the dock and watching true crime shows like Law & Order to learn what typical mistakes to avoid. Mazon and his accomplices carried out the job on November 6, 2005, making a clean getaway despite multiple setbacks, which included Mazon losing his mask at the crime scene and the getaway driver freezing up and not driving to the loading dock. The robbers were not caught until February 2006, after Mazon's fruitless efforts to prevent his brother-in-law, Jeffrey Boatwright, from giving them away with crazy spending habits that attracted the police's attention. Onelio Diaz received a 16-year term, while Carlos Mozon received a 17-year sentence. Carlos was released on parole on April 1, 2016, after serving only nine years. He now lives in Miami and works for Regulated Towing Incorporated as a truck driver. Number 3. The Great Brazilian Heist Banco Central. It was a robbery worthy of the Guinness Book of World Records. This one looked like it came directly out of a Hollywood movie. A 25-member gang dug a tunnel into the Banco Central in Fortaleza, Brazil, over the weekend of August 6, 2005. They dug a 256-foot or just under 80-meter tunnel up through the vault floor of the bank for three months. They took five containers worth $95 million once they arrived. The burglars were able to disable the bank's internal alarms and sensors, and the break-in went unnoticed until the bank reopened on Monday, August 8, 2005. Authorities have recovered more than $8.93 million so far, while the rest remains lost. Only eight people have been arrested so far, making this one of the greatest heists of the century. Number 2. The Infamous Bourbon Heist the final feature for the docuseries heist, The Bourbon Heist, commonly known as Pappygate, needs little to no introduction. The story centers around Toby Kurtzinger, who was hired to work at the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfort, Kentucky back in 1988. And when his upper-crust network of local lawyers, legislators, and doctors started clamoring for rare Pappy Van Winkle finds from the distillery, Kurtzinger was more than happy to oblige. Starting with a bottle here and a barrel there, it grew into larger bourbon thefts and stronger substances for anyone who was willing to pay. In the spring of 2015, investigators received a tip and uncovered five barrels of wild turkey bourbon in a shed at Toby Kurtzinger's property, putting a stop to his company. The barrels were determined to have been stolen, and Kurtzinger was arrested after a search of the residence revealed steroids as well. He pleaded guilty to theft by unauthorized taking and receiving stolen items, among other crimes. He was sentenced to 15 years in prison, but was released after only a month on shock probation, which is a type of probation that can be issued to first-time offenders. Kurtzinger now works as a painter in Frankfort, Kentucky, and, as far as we know, is out of the thieving business. Number 1. The Hostile Heist We'll be turning back the pages in history for this one. In 1972, a crew of thieves and safecrackers from Youngston, Ohio, obtained information from Jimmy Hoffa that Richard Nixon was hiding $9 million in dirty campaign money in a bank in Laguna Niguel, California. The thieves hated President Nixon, and they needed the money, so the seven men proceeded to the bank. They slashed a hole in the roof, evaded an alarm, and landed on a concrete vault. They dug holes in the vault and lined it with explosives then covered it with earth bags to mask the sound. It blew a hole straight through it. Then they raided the vault, taking $12 million in bonds, jewelry, coins, and cash. Dencia's gang had recently robbed another bank in Ohio in the same manner, but this time the FBI had enough information to link the thefts and track down the offenders three months later. Dencia was in prison for over 30 years, and his story recently came to media attention through the 2019 movie Finding Steve McQueen. Thanks for watching. Which one of these heists do you find the most clever? Which one was the most bold? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time on The Bad Badger.